Hello Cherries fans, hope you are doing well today. You've probably seen all over Twitter and in the socials that AFC Bournemouth are closing in on a £1 million deal for Fleetwood Town's highly rated centre-back James Hill. Yes, that's right, the Cod Army are in talks to sell the England under-20 centre-back to the Cherries, who seemingly are beating off some very big names. Of course, we've been very quick to replace experienced Steve Cook, who, who left the club yesterday. He's gone to Nottingham Forest on a free transfer. But at this stage, talks of fairly advanced and it could be leading to a medical very soon. To talk about it, we've got the excellent Nappers from COD's Vlogs with us. If you haven't seen the channel, you need to check it out. So click the link in the description below. Hello, Nappers. How are you, mate? I'm very good. Th uh, thank you, Sam. Um, again, keen to talk about it. Um, I think it's a it's a very good deal for you know both clubs. If I'm honest with you, both parties. And um, yeah, obviously, I'm a big fan. I'm a big fan of you know the way AFC Bournemouth have done things in the last kind of 10, 15 years, and um, Fleetwood are tr uh, hopefully trending up as well. Well, check out this. As headlines go to be beating off the interest of some of these teams. It's also, so Sheffield United have been mentioned, Burnley, Leeds, Southampton, Spurs, Barcelona, and they've all checked in on his progress since he emerged as Fleetwood's youngest ever player in 2018. Now, what can you tell us about the lad? Because, you know, from what I've seen, he seems to be such a prospect and he's just one of many prospects that seem to have emerged from the Fleetwood Academy. Absolutely. You mentioned 2018, he came off the bench against Leicester and I thought, again, he looked, you know, tidy. I didn't think he was quite ready at that point. And it tells you a lot. It took him eight months again to get into the team and it was kind of the end of the season. We had nothing to lose and he came in and he came off the bench against Peterborough um, and later on that season. And then three days later, he played against Blackpool. Now, it's a big game. Obviously, it's a little bit of a derby game as well. But also because his dad played for Preston, his brother plays in the academy at Blackpool, a bit younger than James. And he obviously plays for Fleetwood. His first proper start, it was a bigger game than most starts for him, really. And ever since then, he only got his break maybe a year later after that. And because we had literally no fit centre halves at the club going into last season, and it was him and Harrison Holgate, and he's just you know played and played and played. He's good on his right foot, he's good on his left, he's versatile anywhere. And um, I think he's more better with the ball when he can ping it long. But I think mm. your coach and staff, obviously, you know your manager, he will get that drilled into him. You know, get the ball at his feet and get playing again as well, and get playing through the lines. And he has got a very good long throwing. Now, th this is the closest I've ever seen to Roy Delap long throwing. Honestly, he can. I think sometimes his arms are more tired than his legs a lot of the time when he plays for Fleetwood, <laughs> and that says a lot. What side of defence does he tend to play on? Because most of the clips that I've seen, he seems to be just on the right side. Is that fair to say? Yes. Um, yeah, I, I'd agree with that. Um, normally, because Fleetwood play early, no. We've played, what, 23 games this season? I'd say for 19 of those, we played about three. But to, he did get injured and hasn't played since the start of November. Um, he does like playing on that right-hand side. He can also play on the left if needed. It's just because the other couple of defenders that we have, um, Tom Clark would always be in the middle. He's the old one of the bunch and can kind of direct the other two. And Harrison Olgate, he's probably a little bit better on his left foot than James is. But they're both you know, decent young players and... Again, um, can play versatile as well. So, uh, tell me about this Barcelona thing, mate, because I saw it in the press a while ago. Barcelona uh, were taking a look at him. What was that all about? It's mental because I remember last last season getting a message um, off someone who was doing kind of like press shoots for Fleetwood because we should see them out of scouts that there. And he told me, you know, Stoke would come down, Spurs would come down, uh, Liverpool, you know, Arsenal. The ones you may expect, you know, all the championship and all the pretty much the good Premier League clubs had had a look at him. And when I heard Barcelona, I was a little bit... I do think um, Barcelona are looking for a couple of cheap options to put. Maybe even, you know, they have that Barcelona B-side, don't they? But yeah, it's just true. mad, isn't it? I know EFL... Hobby, who's not the most reliable source tweeted it, and people are having a go at him. And I'm like, on something, you've got something right here. In terms of your 
uh, you know, set up uh, Fleetwood Town. It's obviously very good. I think you've had six academy players that have been playing for the first team this season, and it seems to be a really nice progression. So anyone that's in the youth system can. I mean, there's a ten million pound facility. It looks state of the art, really. I mean, it's it's one of the best in the football league. That's outside category one, and there are a number of stars that have gone through it. Do you, do you think a million pounds for him is a fair deal, or should you be wanting more? With it? I mean, I understand he's near the end of his contract. So maybe at this stage, it's it's possibly a good deal. But talk to us also a little bit about Fleetwood and the academy there. Absolutely. And you say about the facility, it's cat three at the moment. It is about to become category two uh, right. with the indoor dome as well. But when you have a look at it, I think you've got, you know, you've got your two or three elite first team pitches, which James is just in front of, um, of there. Um, you've got, um, but you know, Asheter pictures, you've got five side pictures, you've got a gym, you've got a bar, you've got, you know, you name it, Fleetwood Town have got it, you know, board meetings, you know, um, where players can, you know, meet. It is an absolutely unbelievable facility catered for everything. Um, you met, you mentioned about the, the players coming through, there's so many coming through, you know, the likes of Jay Matete, Paddy Lane, who, you know, I think was signed from Hyde. He's been absolutely unbelievable. You've yeah. got, you know, Jay Gar, who's been at the club for a while. I was in Biggins, is, you know, refactored this fact. I do think he'll, I think a million pounds is right because he's coming to the end of his contract. Fleetwood are also in an embargo. Now, mm. struggling a lot financially, wants to become self sustainable. If we wanted three million, I don't think a lot of clubs would pay that now to go to a tribunal. So I think the contract has had something to do with it. Um, I think as well, I don't think he's played enough games to warrant anything over a million and a half, two million pounds just yet. Is he good? I think so, absolutely. He will become um, a top-class centre-half, um, if that's in the Championship, whether that's um, in the Premier League. Um, I do believe he, he's got the attributes to become a top, top player. Um, and again, one million pounds will just, again, run our academy. And, and again, we've brought a few in this week uh, from you know, like Etienne Adam Andestre, Etienne Blackpool, local clubs to us that we can hopefully develop and sell on um, for good uh, good fees as well. Um, I don't think we've, I think this would be a club record. I think it'll be just over the uh, 1 million we've signed for Vardy, which led to 1.7. But I think Bournemouth will be paying a lot more than 1 million pounds for Hill. I think we'll get be more in add-ons. I think there'll definitely be a call for the England senior side. I reckon it'll be at least £300,000 there. If he plays for, you know, you 50 times, uh, when he makes his debut, they'll probably get a little bit of a fee if he scores a goal. Uh, a promotion bonus as well, that'd be the most intriguing one. And a sell-on fee as well, a 20% sell-on fee. I reckon even without the sell-on fee, it could rise to at least over £2 million pounds this one. Yeah, absolutely. And I was about to say the sell-on fee is ultra important because, you know, just by the fact that we're in the Championship and could potentially be in the Premier League, that just naturally makes players' a stock rise. And if he gets noticed by one of the bigger clubs, and we've, you know, that could be a huge, huge uh, monetary incentive to Fleetwood. I mean, fair to say your season in League One isn't perhaps going as you'd like it because you're teetering just above the relegation zone at the moment, aren't you? Yeah, not as I would like it, but did I expect it? Yes. In an embargo, 22 players and the amount of injuries we've had, mate, it's mm. been unbelievable. Hill's one of them. Again, a key player for us, getting injured at a crucial time and we are down to the bare bones at the moment. Superb. So, he's he's fast, he's leggy, right-sided, technically good on the ball. Is there any areas where you think he's not so good? On the ball, sometimes I think he's a little bit rash and he can get himself tangled up a little bit. But I'm sure, obviously, your coaching staff and uh, will sort that out with him and again make him a top player. But what 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 nineteen twenty year old? He's the same age as me. Like mm. what what what? Who has it all? You, you've got to be a very special player if you've not got a weakness. And I think James will work on that. I think he's got a great attitude, a great desire about him, and he'll just become better and better every game he's played for Fleetwood. I think he's become a better player for us. Brilliant. Well, technically, I've been looking at uh, some of his videos. I've seen uh, one Fleetwood Town game live this season as well. And I've got to say that he, he sort of reminds me a little bit about of Lloyd Kelly, who we've got at the moment. And th that would be such a beautiful centre-back partnership if that was to happen. Him on the right and Lloyd Kelly on the left. But yeah, we'll see how it goes. Well, mate, good luck for the season ahead. Can you tell our viewers a little bit about COD's vlogs? Yeah, I'm a Fleetwood fan who, does, who likes to do League One content as well, talk about the whole league in general. 
um, you know, just you know, talk about football really, and I'll be doing a video reacting to this transfer as well. It'll be on my channel. Brilliant stuff. What we'll do is uh, we'll pop a link in the description to that and we'll retweet it on Twitter as well. Well, Nappers, it's been a pleasure to have your company. Thanks so much for the lowdown on James Hill and uh, hopefully we'll be speaking to you soon. No worries, mate. So there we go. That's the lowdown on James Hill there. Do remember to check out Nappers' channel, Cod's Vlogs, and give it a subscribe. Doing really good things for Fleetwood Town. I love the fact that you can have these individual YouTubers that are just coming along and helping to raise profiles of like clubs in League One, League Two. Even there are some non-league YouTubers as well that have got really big numbers just because of their raw and gritty vlog. So check that out. But James Hill, one of many prospects that is coming out of Fleetwood at the moment. It looks like Bournemouth are going to get their hands on him. It was reported 1.6 million from Tom Barkley from the Sun initially, but it looks to be closer to £1 million. But either way, a very, very shrewd piece of business for the Cherries. And look, we like to invest in youth. Let's face it, with the way that most of the youth that have signed for the Cherries, we know what their value is going to be two, three years down the line. So I think it's a fantastic bit of business there. And hopefully he can fit right in for us. Remember to subscribe to the channel because we've got a hell of a lot of content on the way with regards to all of the transfer speculation that we hear both in and out. And we'll give you the lowdown on every single player that we hear about that is probably going to be joining or leaving so make sure you subscribe there's a video on ethan laird coming up too of the cherries